Hey friends, today I wanted to answer the question, Simon, why did you change your diet to a plant-based diet? And it's something that I recently answered on the ATP Science Podcast, so if you want a little bit of a more in-depth answer, be sure to check that out. Just go to any podcast app and search ATP Science, and I think it was episode 202. What I wanna do is take you through the major elements of the science which convinced me to change my diet. Starting with the understanding that saturated fats, trans fats, and dietary cholesterol, to a lesser extent, all increase the cholesterol in our blood vessels and increase our risk of developing atherosclerosis, which is narrowing of the artery and is the cause for cardiovascular disease, which includes stroke and heart disease. We also know that red meats and processed meats have been classified by the World Health Organization as either group one or group two A carcinogens, which means that they are known to cause cancer or likely to cause cancer. And on top of that, we have a bunch of randomized controlled trials that have shown people or subjects that adopt a low fat vegan or plant-based diet have been able to have better outcomes when compared to standard control type diets. In fact, we also have a study by Dr. Esselstein and another by Dr. Dean Ornish that has looked at low fat plant-based diets in subjects with cardiovascular disease. And they've shown that these diets can not only prevent future cardiovascular events, cardiac events, but also reverse cardiovascular disease, literally reducing the blockages in the arteries of those patients. And that's some pretty strong science. We also know that the Mediterranean diet, which was initially described by Ansel Keys back in the 1940s or 50s as a largely plant-based diet, low in saturated animal fats, low in refined sugars, has been shown to be very protective against cardiovascular disease. And it's it's important to note that, you know, as, as Westerners, we've, we've attributed the the health success of the Mediterranean diet to the olive oil, of course. However, there are a bunch of studies that have looked at olive oil, and in fact, olive oil actually increases endothelial cell inflammation and impairs the endothelial cells in our arteries, which is a risk factor for cardio cardiovascular disease in itself. So it's not so much the olive oil in the Mediterranean diet that is to be attributed to the health benefits of this diet, but more so the abundance of whole food, whole plant-based foods, legumes, grains, nuts, and seeds, which these people back in the 1940s and 50s were eating in abundance. And then if we take a step further and we look at epidemiology, so if we look at studies of populations over time, and if we look at a particular set of, of people in the population in Loma Linda. These, these people are Seventh-day Adventists. So that's, that's part of a religion. And part of their, their religion is that they, they don't drink and they don't smoke. They're all very, very health conscious. And within this group of people, there are omnivores, there are pescatarians, there are vegetarians, and there are vegans. So it's like this perfect, almost randomized controlled trial where you can look at what they're eating and look at their health outcomes and know that it's not being influenced by alcohol or smoking. When we've looked at the data from these populations, which has been studied over decades, we have found the vegans are the only ones with a healthy BMI, a healthy body weight. And when we look at disease outcomes, Compared to the omnivores, the vegans have 50% less chance of developing type 2 diabetes, and that's even when body weight is controlled for. They have significantly less chance of developing various cancers, cardiovascular disease, and, and are living significantly, significantly longer. It's pretty strong science because the omnivores in this group are actually very, very healthy omnivores. They too do much better than the average American on the Western diet. And in fact, the omnivores in this population are only getting about five to 10% of their total energy from animal products. So what this study shows is that the fact that there is still a significant difference between healthy omnivores and vegans is that the power, it's showing the power of plant-based nutrition. 
When you understand all of this and you look at the rate that the, 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 the population is growing, it's predicted there's going to be over 9 billion people in 2050. And you look at how inefficient the animal agriculture is, you know, it takes 34 calories of feed to get one calorie of beef out the other side. It's terribly inefficient. Not to mention the ethical problems with the, with the animal agriculture industry. When you take all of this into account, you can begin to see how humans need to change from a dietary point of view in order to achieve true, not only human health, but planetary health. Thank you.